Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. I'm here at my showroom, The Bio Dude Houston. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button. So I got something here that I've had for sale in my showroom for about two months now. It's captive bread. And I'm gonna build a habitat for you guys. This is a captive bread gold dust day gecko. Um, these little geckos are native to Madagascar. They are very fast, and like other felsuma, they can be kept in slightly smaller vivaria. Uh, they do best individually, but you can keep them in groups of girls. Uh, keeping them in pairs, I really haven't had success with. If you have had success, I've seen grandises kill each other. So, um, But these, these guys are absolutely amazing. We are a little dulled out right now because, well, I ripped her out of her habitat. Uh, and put her in this little cup. So we are a little bit angry, but even with that, I mean, with with her little calcium sacs, I absolutely love it. These critters are really something special. Um, I would say these are more for advanced keepers. If you've never had a pet gecko before, I wouldn't recommend Felsuma being your first choice. They're not really a gecko that you hold. They're a gecko that you really enjoy from a distance and you enjoy their interactions in the actual bioactive habitat just because of their sheer, how well at escaping they are. But being omnivores makes it real cool because you can give them nectars, you can give them fruits. And on top of that, you get the, the, you get the, the, the whole carnivore activity. And these guys love basking upside down. So I have a Zoom Ed 12, 12, 24, um, and I have one of my cork bark backgrounds uh, in here. This would be considered my desert background, but you can use it for tropical. Uh, we did have to cut this down a little bit to specifically fit within, uh, but you know, it's only about a quarter of an inch, give or take. I am gonna plug the sides up with moss just to be safe, to make sure I can't have any crickets or anything get behind the substrate or sorry get behind the background but i'm really excited let's get buildings okay so here the very first step is putting in your drainage layer i've decided to use my hydro grow version 2. i'm deciding to go with the version 2 because i am using the fauna um, it just makes it a little bit more user friendly especially with draining it if necessary and this will allow me since i'm going to be selling this habitat anyway uh, it'll make it a little bit easier for the person getting it so then I'm going to do a nice drainage layer here. Okay. Let's see here. I want about two inches of depth. I got about two and a half to three. That's perfectly fine with me. Now, will you notice here how the top layer is rather uneven? Because of that, I'm going to take a couple extra precautions and I am going to put down my vivarium screen protector. This is the same size that would come in your 12 by 12 kit that you purchased from the bio dude. And then I'm gonna put that right down. Okay, so for the substrate, we're gonna use my Terra Fauna. So very similar to ABG. Um, however, this is more of a, of a dirt-based substrate. So what this is gonna do is gonna retain a little bit more moisture, putting humidity back into your habitat throughout waves throughout the day in the form of spikes, which is essentially what you know these animals are used to. So that's the route I'm gonna be going. But you know, if you don't wanna go with the fauna, you can use ABG. You just might be missing a little bit more to get those spikes that your animals require. So then I'm gonna cut open the bag and then I'm gonna get my thing of water and I'm gonna fill it up. Okay. And then I'm also gonna take my BioShot. All of you, if you're new to the channel, essentially the BioShot is just a, it is a myco starter. It's gonna put in your essential uh, fungal processes into your substrate while providing animal, uh, sorry, a non-animal based fertilizer, which will help jumpstart your plant. So that way they don't go through that shock of a nutrient lacking substrate. So that way you, you don't lose all your plants. Again, help that beginner's curve. Okay, got it nice and uh, saturated here. I'm happy with that. All right, I got about, about the same amount. I used about 80% of the bag. Awesome. Okay, now that it's nice and mixed together, I am then going to take some of my sphagnum moss right here. This is the, this is the Chilean grade. All right. 
All right, now I'm definitely not gonna use all of this. In fact, I'm only gonna use about a handful. So I'm gonna get a handful of moss in here. Now, you don't wanna put the moss over the top and just leave it on the top. That's gonna impact the ability for air to get to the top layer, to the bottom layer. It's effectively hurting your substrate's ability to breathe and make it to the drainage layer as moisture passes through. So we have the Bioshot mixed in, then I'm gonna take my leaf litter. Okay, so you guys know the metaphor I like to use is the substrate is the car and your biodegradables leaf litter being the fuel that maintains it and drives it. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our soil with our leaves and our bio shot and we are just gonna mix it thoroughly together. So that way we get a nice hearty mixture of biodegradables throughout all the layers going meeting the top uh, screen protector on the drainage layer. Perfect. That's right about what I wanted here. Awesome. Okay. All right. Really quick here. I'm just gonna, those little open sections that I was talking about from the side, I'm just gonna get those because I don't want my little dude to get back there. That's for sure. It's like perfect on this side. Okay. Okay. So brief overview. So we have our hydro grow version two drainage layer with a screen protector on top. And then we have our substrate mixed in with our bio shot, as well as our necessary bio biodegradables that are slowly going to break down over time, help form relationships with your plant roots in the form of the bio shot uh, to help aerate the soil as well as keep the soil nice and healthy long term. Now we can start putting the pieces together and getting it built, which I'm really, really excited for. So let's get started. So I've been saving this for something special. Now, I don't know if the critter will ever use it, but if anything, it's going to look really awesome in here. So he's going to be the, the center, the focal point, right like that, right in the middle. Okay, and then I have this piece of mangrove root that I've also been saving for something special. And this 121224 fits that bill. I'm gonna move this floor just a little bit. There we go. So I got some space in the back. I love it. Okay. Now, being that this species is arboreal, we definitely want to make sure that we are providing enough surface area for them to climb, as well as refuge from the sun and places to feel comfortable and secure. And to facilitate that, I do have a couple cork bark pieces, but mainly cork bark tubes. The, this, these guys, the gold dust day geckos, they love the tubes. They can get their little fat bodies in and out of the holes, peek their little heads out. And if you put their, their ledge to hold their like food at a little exit like this, they don't have to expose their full bodies when they're eating. Makes them feel less anxious and it can make them feel a little bit more comfortable in their habitat because it's important to remember that these guys are wild animals, regardless of how long they've been in captivity they still retain all of their natural instincts of survival as if it was anything else. And I love how that looks. I think that looks great. So before I get any further, the next thing I wanna do is put in some cleanup crew. So we have three different types of cleanup crew that I'm gonna to attempt to get established in here. First, we have two Lavis species. We have powder oranges, which are right here. And then we have dairy cows, which are right here. These guys are gonna need a lot of biodegradables. So I'm gonna make sure to provide enough in here for them to sustain a necessary population. And they're mainly gonna stay on the top layer, so right around here. And the day gecko is also gonna love to eat these, 100%. Then you have your, your dwarf white isopods, which are a little bit harder to find. Here they go. They're super, super tiny. So we have some subadults in here and some babies. And then here we also have some springtails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce all of them into this habitat. 
One, two. I'm gonna put the dwarf whites in the back, three. And then the spring tails, what I'm gonna do, put the piece of charcoal here, piece of charcoal here, piece of charcoal back here, piece of charcoal here, dump the rest. Perfect. I love how that looks. I think that looks wonderful. All right. So with that now comes plants. I got a couple plants. So all of these plants have already been de-dirted and rinsed off. So they are all 100% good to go. If you're not sure how to treat your plants before putting them in your habitat, a couple videos back I posted it. So we have a whole bunch of different types of plants here. I got some, some Hypoestes, some Cryptanthesis, some Aglonimias, some Sanservias, some Bromeliad, some Live Moss. We got a whole bunch of different stuff. So my options are way open. I know for a fact that I want something tall that can handle heat. That's going to be closer to the hot spot. And I think this Aglonimia is the perfect candidate for that. And I'm thinking it should go right back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig my hole in the back without cutting open my hand. Okay, I'm going to put this right here. Okay. Boom. Aglonimia. Now this is really going to fill up here. I'm expecting this plant to really shine, uh, especially as it gets some size to it. And then I'm going to put my cork bark tube right back where it's supposed to go. Boom. So then we have this front section here that can come here to the front, here, here, and here. So we obviously wanna make sure that there is enough space for our, our gecko to feel comfortable, to climb, and you know, to essentially thrive, right? That's the point, is to not just to survive, it's to thrive. So I think the next thing I'm gonna put in is we have these beautiful Sanservias sans right here. Absolutely beautiful. And I think that is something that would do extraordinarily well back behind here. So I'm going to dig that hole. Boom. Oh, that looks awesome. Okay. And then I'm going to... Sorry, I suppose I didn't mean to scare you. Okay. Look at that. So it still has plenty of room to grow. The cork bark tube can still be where it's at. And it's nice and secure in there. I love it. The isopods are like, what are you doing to me? We got this beautiful hypoestes right here. I mean, look at this color right there. Absolutely stunning. I love, it's really, especially when she's by it, it's really, these colors are really gonna pop as they clash together, as you will. So this is gonna look really nice right in front of here, right in here. And now with these guys, they don't tolerate heat at all. So you want to make sure that they are going to be the furthest away from the heat bulb as possible. Let me take some of this spag moss right here. Boom. Here's the trick I like to show everybody. You get the root base and you get it wrapped in here entirely and you just squeeze it. It will thrive right like this. And again, I'm not trying to have this be directly under the heat bulb but I'm also not trying to cover up our exit here and exit here because I want the gecko to be able to use the tube. So I think my option is gonna be, honestly, I think it's gonna be awesome like right in here like this. Miss King will hit it and that provides a little bit of depth and a little bit of color. And then this, this one, I'll let you guys know in a couple weeks how it does at this location. The heat bulb is gonna be concentrated on this side, so it should be okay. But I also don't wanna make false promises that, yeah, this will do fine right here, but we're gonna try. Awesome. And last but not least, I have this little baby lemon button fern that we've salvaged. We got a shipment of these cooked, that a whole boxes of them just came in melted. But I was able to salvage this little one here out of all the all of the sadness so i'm actually going to put this and we're going to see how it does next my favorite uh is looking at the top 
So I have this absolutely beautiful bromeliad right here. I have two bromeliads. We have a mini and we have a big one. They are both neo regalias, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna follow the similar principle like I did with the Cryptanthus. I'm gonna take the base and I'm gonna kind of wrap it in this bag, right like this. And number two. Now this one we're gonna watch real close. Mainly just because of A, the, uh, there we go. That's exactly how I wanted it. I go Nimia right up front. Boom. I love that. I love how that looks. All right. So I'm gonna take the remainder of my leaves that I have here in the bag. And I'm gonna put, dump them right up front here, right like this. And I'm gonna put the rest in the back. I'm mainly doing this so that way my cleanup crew have a solid foundation all over the terrarium. And then, look at this. This is some of my pillow moths that I sell. I love this green man right here. I love it so much that he's gonna be covered in moss. Now the best part about this is this green man is covered in ceramic. It's made of ceramic, which means that this moss is gonna get a whole bunch of nutrients as this as it gets wet because this wicks water. So this is gonna wick water out of the substrate and hopefully keep it nice and toasted, which is what I would love to see. And then at the base, we're gonna leave his mouth open, but then we're gonna cover up this por these portions over here so that way it's nice and synonymous with the lemon button fern. Actually, no, I don't want that. I want to put it over here like this. Yeah, I like this a lot better. It looks a lot more fluent like that. Now, you notice I have a convenient little spot there in my left-hand corner, specifically for a little Exoterra Aztec water bowl. Pretty cool. Check it out. Fits perfectly right there. Okay. Next, we got some assorted seed pods. I have a monkey pod, a Uxi pod, and a Para Ustella pod. These come three packs. So with these, I'd like to, I'm gonna put this one in the back. Again, these are in here as, fo as food sources for your isopods, as well as to reinforce your established processes from the bio shot. So I'm gonna put that in there. That's gonna give a spot for the isopods to crawl out of the water. Put this here like this into the hypoestes. And then this one here in the back. I know it seems kind of wasteful, but trust me guys, placing them throughout the habitat, even if you can't see them, plays a big role. I really wanna use the monkey pod, but unfortunately I don't think I'm gonna fit it. Okay. All right, I really like how this looks. It's nice and fluent up here. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try putting a little bit of this up here to see if I can get it to stick. But if it'll survive long term, I do not know. But we're gonna definitely try. Boom. That's how it's gonna be. All right. So next, we missed. I think this looks great. All right, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm just misting, making sure that everything's nice and sufficiently, you know, hydrated for the shock of being pulled out of your pot and put into a new habitat and dirt that's not as nutrient dense as the one you were in. Also making sure the isopods have a little bit of, uh, and the springtails have a little bit of excess moisture to work off of as the tank continues to cycle. Last but finishing touches are putting some moss here at the very top. Again, just as a safe precaution, this is what I like to do. You don't have to do this. You can always silicone it before you build it. I just chose to do it this way because this is faster and cheaper and easier. And I'm a creature of comfort and a creature of habit. So this is the route I went. But right like this, you literally just stuff right underneath. This stuff will harden 
And as long as you're watching your feeders that they're not chewing into it, it'll last forever. Okay, now a couple things with this topper since it's a zoom ed, they have these holes in the back, but they don't have the clips. So I also stuff these like so. Because these holes back here, your gecko can and will escape from them. So it is just a good, it is a good idea to take those steps to seal off this. You don't even have to use moss, you can always tape it. Put some duct tape on top, that works. That works just, just the same too. Now, it's built. I am really happy with how this looks. Let's get it, let's get it illuminated. So here I have my BioDude Glow and Grow LED adapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this plugged in. Okay, I have it turned on. Then I have my six inch Glow and Grow LED. These guys come with a one year warranty. You guys, me, I love my lights. Red and blue diodes, 44 of them. Uh, really great nine watt, powerful. You're gonna see how well it does for this 12, 12, 24. And they do also now ship in these nice bottom pieces. So there's no more broken bases with shipping. How about that? Scaling is so much fun and let me tell you, it's not easy, but we're doing it. Okay, so I got my BioDude Glow and Grow LED on top. I'm gonna be running this in conjunction with my other lighting. So being a completely diurnal species, Gold dust day geckos do need a lot of different extracurricular lighting than just a plant bulb, right? So the first thing that I like to recommend is using a T5 fixture. This is the BioDude T5 Solar Grow. And then I'd recommend a 12 inch T5. You can go with a Rectisun 5.0 or you can use an Acadia 6%. Um, I wouldn't go anything above a 6%. I wouldn't recommend a shade dweller either. These guys are baskers in Madagascar. They are exposed to UV rays. They need UV to, for, to, to survive. It's very important that you provide that. So, and I'm gonna be having the UVB right here in the very front like this. So just pretend this is moved back about four inches because of the notches on the side are preventing me. And then for heat, what I'm using is the, is the Exoterra Glow Light. Now, if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, guys, there's a lot out there. I just like these because the, the ceramic on the, the porcelain on the inside, excuse me, retains a lot of extra heat. So it's not as subtle heats off and dissipates. It does it over time, which can also help mimic their natural environment. We're gonna go with a daylight spot. So this isn't a halogen bulb. So I'm always gonna recommend halogen because it does infrared A and infrared B extremely efficiently. However, this 25 watt for this size habitat is exactly what I'd recommend to start. I am always going on the error of caution. So I'm gonna have this hooked up to a thermostat. A lot of people only use thermostats for under tank heaters, but honestly, I use it to make sure my temps and almost all my habitats are accurate. Um, at least my large ones, and then I'll use a temp gun or a thermometer hygrometer. So like I discussed, the basking spot is gonna be centralized right here underneath the cork bark tube. So it's gonna create different microclimates of temperature and humidity throughout the cork bark tube and varying down here. All of the plants that are gonna be exposed to the heat are gonna be able to handle that amount of heat on this side. These aglonemia ones on the side, they might grow away or they might get a little crisped out very briefly, but I don't see it being a long-term problem. Now we got our lighting. Now let's talk about what we're gonna be feeding this omnivorous critter. So we are gonna be putting a lizard ledge right here so that way we can stick our little head out and look around. Alternatively, we could put it up here on the side. But essentially in that, in that ledge, we're gonna be feeding uh, different Pangea foods. We rotate out between the yellow and the red. The red has insects in it, uh, and that seems to give us the most home run. Since we are providing UVB, we are providing uh, a calcium that does not have D3 in it and a multivitamin. I like to use the Rapashi calcium and the Supervite. Just really make sure that if you are providing uh, you know, UVB, that you are uh, you know, making sure you're using the proper calcium. And then of course we are gut loading our insects with, pollen, with uh, bee pollen. This is my pollen power. 
and our bug rub. So gut loading is extremely important with these guys. We're already starting to, we're really starting to lighten up here. So you can see just from the beginning of the video, there's a complete change. If you look towards the, the top of the head, the blue behind the eyes is really starting to come in. You can see the orange speckles right around the neck area that slowly transgresses into that lime green. And when she's real fired up, that tail with those red splots is as bright as can be. I mean, honestly, guys, you can't go wrong with day geckos. They are absolutely beautiful. And the reason we keep reptiles as pets is honestly is to see how unique they are as animals when you're keeping them in their habitat, all when you're keeping them in the correct type of environment, all their natural instinct, instinctual niches come out. And day geckos are a prime example of that. They're intelligent, they're fast, they're quite honestly, their diet is quite manageable. And honestly, they're not that hard to breed. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's just really, really awesome to be able to work with this species and to be able to uh, have them here for sale at our point of sale. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions about their care or the kit on the website or anything, or any other suggestions that could make this better, drop a line in the comments. You guys know me. My name is Josh Halter. I am the owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can come here to my storefront Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4, and Saturday, 10 to 5. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, social, and of course, hit that like and subscribe button. The Dude Abides. This, this, I love how this tank looks, it looks awesome.